here, buddy. Come on. There he is. Yeah, hey, howdy, hey. Back again with another one. Exciting. Classic video gear. Another this, one. Uh, mixer has seen better days. It's not uh, not the happiest deep sort of tape residue scarring. Bit of dust hidden away in it. But um, it's in pretty good nick internally. Tough as nails, tough as a rock, tough as some other tough thing. You can see I've been sporting a bit of a uh, a bit of a corona beard. Yeah, boy. Who do we have with us today? A old friend from the 1990s. I believe the year 1990 to be exacto. We have the Panasonic Digital Production Mixer WJ MX10. It's part of a long and historic lineage of Panasonic mixers in the MX series, each of them different, yet kind of similar in their own ways. Some people think that there's a hierarchy from the MX-10 at the bottom all the way up to the MX-50 or some of the higher numbered ones, but I don't think that's true. I think they are all different, even if they look kind of similar and have kind of similar sorts of uh, features within them. So uh, it is listed as a special effects generator um, and you will see why very soon. What is inside? This thing, it's a two channel mixer, A bus, B bus, got the old um, three trends RGB plus C coming in here. And then this other one is my camera. Uh, it also has an external camera input for the superimposing effect. <laughs> for the superimpose effect. Superimpose effect. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Two input mixer, freeze frame memory. Uh, it's got 17 wipes, eight different colors for backgrounds, effects section. It's got a superimpose section, which is like a Luma key. It's got uh, Tyler options that come in the front here. I haven't got the Tyler, unfortunately. Uh, it's a cool little tiling add on. It's got a joystick. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Audio mixing, uh, BNC connectors around on the back, and made by Panasonic when they were a division of Matsushita. Five, yeah, it's about 5.5 kilos, I think, and then 16.5. 13 and 4 tall in terms of inches. So it's big, it's heavy, runs off 240 volts. I mean, this one does. The American ones obviously run off 110 volts, but yep, plug straight into your wall, action packed. Bunch of different outputs. It's got previews, multiple record outs. Um, so we're going to go through it what it is, what it does. Um, yeah, despite being so large um, and heavy, I mean, Compare it to something like a V4. V4 is maybe like half the size, give or take. Um, and V4 is mm, tiniest bit shorter. Not by much. Um, yeah, I've gigged with this thing despite its size um, and weight. Um, just because it's got this really beautiful, crunchy aesthetic. Yeah, so in 1990, when this beautiful beast into the world, there was um, a lot of stuff happening. Uh, I mean, there kind of always is, but... So, in 1990, when this beautiful sucker was born, I was three years old. Um, maybe let's go from the bottom right through and snake our way from the bottom right up to the top right. So, over here is our main kind of like master level. So. I can fade the video in and out. Um, I can also choose what fades. The title could also fade if I had the title stuck in. And the audio, I can make it fade everything or just one or none. So now when I turn the video off, 
it does not fade, so I could fade just the title or just the audio. You have the selection of what you will fade to. So here I am fading to the background color. Can also fade to white, background color, or black. Brill. Next section, and the sections are divided by this uh, small groove. Got an audio mixing section. We've got, of course, our audio from our input channels. We also have our video input channels, I should say. We also have um, auxiliary, and there's a um, little dB meter here, so you can meter your audio. And then you also have uh, audio balance, so you can also fade between input A's audio and input B's audio and external mic. Again, like I said, don't really use those. Uh, I'm more interested in the video part. When we come over to here, this is our mix slash wipe section. Like I said, um, let's change over here. So I have mix selected, video one going to A, video two going to B. With mix selected, it's just a simple alpha fade between the two. And obviously I can just cut by pressing the button. It corresponds to it. Buttons are a bit stiff with age. Uh, we've also got background color, which I'll talk about in a sec. Let's see, video one, video two. Uh, that is the mix. We also have a wipe. So wipe is selected using this wipe pattern selector across here. And this will tell you um, some interesting, what you need to know information about using the wiper. So here I have selected a square wiper, square wipe pattern, I should say. And uh, I'm able to, let me get that in the center. I'm able to, woo, square fade. So now this is a square that I can use the joystick to position. And we also have the option of a circle. Some of the larger ones in the MX series have uh, like soft edges and borders and other kinds of things that you can do to your wipes. But this is just like super duper simple. Uh, I don't think it has a reverse. Um, so if you want it the other way around, you have to switch which channel goes where. Some mixes have a reverse so that Every time you do the wipe, it flips what is in the front layer and what is in the back layer. Um, and so you can do, you know, circle out continually or circle in continually, but ignore that. Um, we also have, over on this side, we also have four buttons that let us configure all the other types of wipes. One thing I love is the rock, it might be hard to see in the recording, but the rolling way the analog video is, the sort of line by line effect of analog video. If I move this fast, you'll see that the um, edge is actually bending in the direction that the video lines go, which I love. So we've got vertical here, Vertical the other way, horizontal, and horizontal the other way. You'll notice that I turned off the wipe effect between each of those changes, and that is because you can select multiple wipe effects together. And so now this is both the vertical ones. I could also select both the horizontal ones or kind of any sort of combination thereof. So it might look like, from just the look of the um, six buttons, that you only have a few options for wipes. But in fact, you have an absolutely enormous range. And that's what this sticker is about. The sticker shows you how to select the wipe type that you would like from across the top based on the buttons down the side. It's all super straightforward stuff, but um, it is a very nice 
a very nice kind of feature. So, over here we have the positioner. So like I showed you, the positioner really, on this mixer at least, really only works with the wipe and with the wipes that have the uh, positioner box around them here. Above that, we've got background color. So let's, let's, Check out this. So, background color, as the name suggests, let me lets me select a background color from eight very vibrant, super high chroma style colors. Also back color over here can fade to a back color. How about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this background color also has an effect on our superimpose section. Jump across to our effects here, which are on by default. We've got get rid of that green, but still, still captures a still frame, kind of locks it off in memory. Strobe which is the still frame effect repeating itself. This is, you will recognize this from many uh, 80s video clips. And we can take it right up to one frame every who knows how many seconds for a nice slow choppy thing. But I quite like it at its lowest setting gives you that nice kind of, almost like 12 frames a second, stop motion looking thing. Mosaic. Mosaic is a classic pixelator. It goes all the way from very subtle. Can I see that? Let's try to get something that's, almost looks like a blur when it's that subtle all the way up to totally crunched out. And then we also have paint. So we have a posterized style effect. Um, <clears throat> strobe has a nice smooth knob, whilst these two have switched steps here. So paint, that's like, hello? Yep, there we go. <clears throat> so paint, as we turn it up, it's more and more posterized. It's reducing the number of uh, color levels that there are. You can notice it particularly with the light in the center of the room. That nice lo-fi color banding. And of course, you can use these in combination. Ah. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. It's almost a early LucasArts style affair with this effect. And like I said, on off, still will capture with the effects that you have engaged. Heading over to Superimpose. Source, video one, which is of course our video one. Okay, video two and external camera. Nothing is happening because I've not turned the superimpose effect on. So I turn on the superimpose effect and these ingeniously sliding sliders that cannot go past each other, which I quite like, allow me to tune in the luminance level at which I would like to start cutting away the video. So now all the luminance from video one, between these two levels, will be sliced out. And I can decide what goes behind it. Back color, white, title effect, and the titler. 
um, we'll be able to use that. Back color, back color, back color. Title effect, um, oh, I'm mistaken, sorry. Title effect adds a shadow. I think there's, yeah, a couple of different depths of shadow. So this is like no shadow, slight shadow. And that's like shadow with outline. Yeah, nice. So now that's a very um, cartoony style effect there. Reverse, flips it. So now everything except the luminance between these two levels is cut out. Was that true? No, sorry. Gotta press, gotta press the button. Gotta press the button. Yeah, these buttons are a little sticky in their old age. So now everything except the luminance between these two levels is cut out. Our input source, of course, doesn't have to be source one. Could be source two, which is our three trends RGB. Let's flip this sucker around. Great. There we go. Come on. Takes a bit of dialing in in this case. So let's move to looking at video two and turn that off. So this is our video two input channel. What we are doing is when I turn this on, we will be selecting luminance between two ranges and we will be inserting the background color over the top. So now you can see we've got this clippy choppy purple happening over the top. And so you'll see that the superimpose effect goes over the top of the video coming from our digital frame synchronizer effects. Interestingly, we also have external camera. So this camera I have set up here is um, uh, very low quality and it is not synced. Um, I believe the external camera needs to be internally synced to the mixer somehow. Um, I haven't really looked into that. I mostly just use it for this bad weird rolling effect that I'm quite uh, a fan of to use, especially when you want to add some, especially when you want to add some kind of like weird grainy extra stuff here. So. So that is me fading out the video. Now we are just looking at this camera being lumicade here. And then coming to the final section is the record video out. So it is possible to jump straight to video one is the output. Of course, video one is passing through the effects. Video 2, which is not passing through the effects. And Effect, which um, is a mix of kind of the whole thing. It's a mix of kind of the whole flow through it. So something I haven't discussed yet is what's happening around this section. So power light, sync warning, I'll let you know if one of your inputs is out of sync or there is no kind of sync for the mixer to lock onto. Then we have input mode. So here, one goes to one with a box on it, two goes to two. So that means that input one, video one, is going to the effects, which we can see here. Remembering input one is my camera, input two is the video sense. Uh, but alternatively, I can press this button and now that has flipped. So one and two have flipped, not only their you know, relationship on the AB mixer, but now the effects are affecting channel two. Bring it over here. We also can push one to both. So this third selection means that now we have one going to both the effects and also one being used as the other channel. 
So now I can sensor, let me do some sensoring. I can now sensor my mouth. So I can take a section of the video and apply an effect to it. And of course, superimpose again, doesn't affect either. Alternatively, we can take two. We can send channel two to both. And so here I have the video synth going to both, both the effect and directly out. So it's probably worth setting this sucker up with some other stuff and maybe getting like a little system kind of set up. So this one's getting split in two. <laughs> Turned out a bit long. Um, so this first part is going to be the the overview and the description and me walking through it. And then the second part is going to be me hooking it up with other gear, doing the feedback thing, jamming with it, making some cool stuff with it. Uh, let me know what you like and dislike about this cool piece of tech. Like it, comment it, do all that kind of stuff. There'll be part two relatively shortly. It's mostly edited. Just got to finish it up and drop it. Till next time. No, I can quite see it. Something about it. Thank you.